I would like to ask um, Hofa or Nebusang to give us a little bit of what she knows and what she understands and her experience on how to start a business as a woman. Please do take notes. Please do learn a lot because these are things that you will find exist within the business world. Thank you so much. Sanitize. Good morning. How are we this morning? I don't know if, I feel like when I'm standing here, I'm, I'm very far. They have to look at me this way. And you guys have to look at me up here. Is it okay if I calm down? Okay. Is it okay? I want to ask the sound guys. Is it okay if I calm down? There won't be any interruption. Okay. So how are you feeling this morning? Are you sure you're good? <laughs> you guys don't sound so good. Anyways, I'm good. I feel great. And I'm so happy amongst everything to be here to stand before women, to speak to women, because I'm a great supporter of women. I also recognize the phenomenal women that are here, that are part of the panel discussion today. I've checked them out. They are boss. They are boss. So a round of applause for them, please. <laughs> okay, before I can, sh I can share uh, my bits and pieces on how to start uh, a business as a woman, I'm going to share with you a little bit on my story. Um, my story starts way back in, well, I'll start in 2018 because if I can go way back, I'm going to spend a lot of time on that. So in 2018, I was unemployed. I had just I, I had just, yeah, I had just quit my job, and there I thought I was going to make it. It was very rough. I spent the entire time getting part-time jobs there and there. Some were paying, some were not paying that much. And then, you know, I, I, I was sitting at home tired, disappointed, discouraged. And then I said, you know what, I, if I get a chance and if I get an opportunity to make money again, I'm going to use that money to invest so that I can make my life better, all right? So I then got a chance. I got a chance to do uh, an advert for a certain bank. I was just called out of the blue because I'm not really, I wasn't experienced in the area. So I was called out of the blue and the lady told me, no, this is what you're going to do, this is what you're going to do. I said, okay, it's just to come in and take pictures. So I went in, uh, we did the photo shoot, and then I was paid. I was paid 2.5. To me, it didn't matter. It was the 2.5. I needed the money. I remember, I was unemployed. So it was 2.5. So the 2.5 came in, and I said, yeah, now it's time, it's time to make more money. So I took the 2.5, and then I went to buy glasses, plastic, no, um, plastic cups. I, I keep confusing. I, I, sometimes I call them glasses, but I've been corrected a lot of times. Apparently they are cups, plastic cups. So I went and bought those, and then I branded them. I wrote, uh, fact, Sephope rocks. I come from Sephope. And then I went home for the holidays. There were hundreds of them. I went home for the holidays, and I sold those cups at, you know, anywhere that I could go. I went out with my cousins, and then I started approaching people. Hey, buy this, this small cup, 15 bula in a hell. It's 15 bucks. So it was 15 bula, sounded very small. So people didn't mind. They started buying. They bought all of them. All of them got sold out in three days, and I had 1.5 in my pocket. And the cost of production was 450. So I made 1,050 pula, you know. <laughs> I was so happy, man. I was so excited. So I was so happy. And then I said, okay, this thing is working. So I'm going to do more. So I started doing more. And then the people were really happy. Colorful, different colors. And bring them. They look nice. And then I started putting in colorful straws. You know, people, when they are at, when people are having fun, they, they are ready to spend. How many Manati people can spend? So moto, one person could buy three cups just because they like the yellow one, the pink one, and the blue one. You know, that's how it, I made it. And then I started introducing T-shirts, facts for Perox T-shirts, and the people loved them. The people loved them, and they said, no, we want more. I, I went ahead and produced the T-shirts, 
And then I had a chance uh, to meet other people along the way through uh, mediums like Habani Youth Business Pizza. They gave me a chance. I worked with them. So they gave me a chance to put up a, a small stall. So when the guests came through, by my, they passed by my stall, I got clients, first time clients, and they said, you know what, we want to work with you. Please print this for me, print, print that for me. That time I was staying at home and I'd run around to the guys that I knew could print and then I'd, I'd pay them to do everything. And that's how I started and then it went. And then <laughs> later on, I met somebody who knew somebody who wanted to sell their uh, printing business, branding business. It was an entire office. I went to view it. I said, okay, fine. How much is the person willing to, say, to sell it for? They said, oh, about 25K. I said, oh, that's not a lot of money. I didn't have the 25K. <laughs> I didn't have the 25K. I said, ah, oh, that's, that's not a lot. So I went and I met with the person. And the person said, you know what? I don't want to sell this business anymore. Have you considered partnership? I said, let me go think about it. So I went to think about it. The person was not responsive. Remember, I'm a female, and my partner, my current business partner is a male. So I think when he looks at me, he says, ah, this girl is gonna waste my time. By, by the way, I'm looking at her. Okay, that time I didn't have red hair, but <laughs> you know, I think he just thought I was gonna waste his time. So by God's grace, I believe, and then I got a feature in the newspaper, Midwick Sun, big page. They wrote my story, they wrote, they interviewed me, I gave them the answers, they, you know, and then I got another chance, daily news. So when he saw that, he said, oh, okay, I can work with this person. We sat down, we drew a partnership agreement, and with nothing but myself, I got into business with my current business partner, and I've been in the business since 2018, until now, I run the business. It's called Brandec, and it's growing every single day, and I see it, and I'm very proud of myself. So I just wanted to share with, with you, with, with that with you guys, before I can, I can, thank you, before I can go ahead. So now, business, what is business? How do I start a business as a woman? The reason why I was sharing my story with you is so that I could show you a few pointers. And there's some of the things that I didn't say, I didn't say before. Now, before you can start a business, it's very important, or any other thing that you might want to venture into, it's very important to know who you are. Identity. I stand on who I am every single day. I believe that, I've always believed that I'm a solution provider, that I'm a leader, that I'm meant to, 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 to change people's lives. And by that sense of identity, I was able to establish something that is actually doing that. Every single day, there are clients coming in, you know, I want to print this on, on this and this and that, I don't know how to do it, I don't know how to do it, and then I come in through Brandec as Hofane, the solution provider. And I say, okay, no, cool. You, you wanna do this? Okay, fine. Let's look at this. Okay, this can be done this way. This is best, how best you can do it. This is how we give out solution. That's an identity I, I, I chose for myself. I said, I'm gonna be a solution provider. I said, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna change people's lives. I hired a few young people or worked with them. Some on temporary basis, some on semi-permanent, uh, semi, you know, permanent basis. But I was humbled one of the days when one of the guys sat me down and said, you know, Kofa, the time you hired me, I really needed the job. I really needed the money because I have a small kid and there was nothing. I literally had no income and you helped me. You took me in. You taught me how to do the job. You taught me everything that I know and I'm really grateful. I needed everything that you taught me and I needed every single income I got from you. I was very humbled. But hey, look at it, it all goes down to who I perceive myself as, who I see myself as. So it's very important. You can start, all, we, everybody can start a business, we can all register a business, but the difference is going to be who you are. How are you going to stand out? It's going to depend on who you are. 
So it's very important to identify yourself, to give yourself identity, right? And then what you do is, and then you find the right time. Okay, there's not really the right timing, but you have to have the guts. You have to have the guts to stand by whatever you started. But it's, business is not easy. I'd be lying if I say it's easy. I'm here, but I'm supposed to be doing one, two, three, but I made a sacrifice to be here because I knew this was very important. But business is not easy. Getting your first time clientele, convincing people to trust you is not easy. So you need to know then how you're going to go ahead, set the right principles for yourself. The principles that you live by is, are going to be easy to continue do, practicing as you go on with your life. This is something I told myself a long time back when I was still in varsity. I said, I'm going to keep my word. I'm going to make sure that I keep my word. And I keep my word to myself first before I can keep my word to the second person. And I live by that. Every time a client walks in and says, I want this and this and this, I will ask them, when do you want it? They will say, I want this by, by this. I will make sure, we will make sure that is done by the time that we, by, in the, well, it will be done by the time we agreed uh, on. So it's the principles, it's identity. Are we together? It's your identity. Set the right identity. Who are you? Who do you want to be identified as? Secondly, it's the principles. The principles that will guide you to who you say you are. Keep your word in business. It's very important. I know right now, maybe uh, the youth to say, you know, youth businesses are not really this because they do, they'll promise you this and then they, they don't do this, but prove them wrong. I am one of the people that prove people wrong as a woman in business because I keep my word. I work hard. There were days when I could work until 12 midnight and sleep in the office because I had promised a client that by 10 o'clock the next morning, your order is going to be ready. So if, if it means extending my hours of work and letting uh, my colleagues go home, I, was, I, I do it. I've slept in the office a couple of times. I went home in the morning just to bath and come back to work. Yeah, workaholic. But it works. It brought in the results. It brought in more clients. People trusted me the more. Now, and then you need to find what you are good at. Remember I said, those plastic cups. I started with small plastic cups, and I was good with them. I can do them. I, can, I know where to get them. I know where to buy the material. I know what to do. I know the spec in my head. I know the measurements. So it's good. You give me t-shirts, let's say, for example, 50 t-shirts, depending on the design, I can do them alone in two hours. That is the cutting of the material, the weeding, the entire production to get a whole t-shirt that's printed in two hours. But depending on the design, sometimes I even take, I'm faster. I can take an hour depending on the design. You guys are looking at me like, what? Is she crazy? <laughs> no, I'm not. It's actually work that I've done. Because at first I was alone. My business partner is, doesn't stay in town, so most of the time I'm the one running the business. So I was alone. I had to learn everything, how to operate the machines and everything in, in a week. So I was alone because I couldn't afford to pay anyone. Sometimes you can't afford to pay anyone in business. You have to do it alone. I don't know if any of my colleagues would agree to that. <laughs> you have to work alone. And you also have to to do that in order to understand the business. Now, moving to my third point. Understand the business. Know the business. But you can't run a business that you don't know. It doesn't matter what you, when you're the boss, you sit in the office and, you know, you're the boss. There's nothing wrong with that. You can have your own separate office, but you need to know each and everything that happens in your business, you need to know. Can I take off this mask? It's a little bit disturbing. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. But 
you need to know what's happening in your business, be it from the cleaning to, you know, to the finance, to the marketing, to the operations, you need to know. So be ready for that. Be ready to work over time in order to understand how your business operates. This is very important because you are then able to hold somebody accountable when they don't do what you demand. 50 t-shirts in two hours. So I, don't, I wouldn't understand when somebody says, I'm printing 50 t-shirts for two days. Because I know that this can be done in two hours. But you're telling me that you're going to do 50 t-shirts in, in two days? No, it means then you're not, you're not competitive enough to work with me. So you need to know the business so that you can then hold people accountable. Not only that, but you can also be considerate. Considerate in, uh, in their remuneration. Understand that this is the input that they, 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 this is their input. This is how much they deserve to be paid. I don't believe in paying people peanuts. I don't believe in that. And I'd advise anybody who's, who's aspiring to say that if, if, you, if you take care of your people, they'll take care of you. You know, pay them well if you can. But if you can't, also it's advisable to explain to them that this is what, my business is not really performing so well, but um, I'm willing to give you this much. When we get better, um, you can then have, you know, a bigger slice of the cake. It's very important, it's communication. My fourth point, communication in business. I have, I have so many times been, uh, put myself in a vulnerable position where I have, <laughs> I have actually told my colleagues to be, you know, to be upfront with me, to tell me when they're not happy. You know that's very, you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable position right there. Or uh, your subordinate, or uh, you can tell me when, I'm sorry, can I use the BS word? You can tell me when I'm bullshitting and you won't lose your job. <laughs> you know, so I had to say, because I needed them. I know I need them in order to be efficient, to efficiently run the business and in order for the business to be, to be run. So I, 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 I told them, guys, if you see me doing something that's in, totally inappropriate or that's letting you down uh, in, your, in your work, please be upfront with me. Tell me that, can we have a moment? Uh, you're doing this and this and this and this, but this is not okay. They, and, and that has worked. They've advised me, you're undercharging. This is, this is not supposed to be this much. You're undercharging. The, you're actually undercharging. And I said, guys, but they said, mm -mm. we think when I know you should stay away from charging certain people because you are very lenient. You are undercharging. They've told me, uh, we think we should do this this way. It actually works. They've taught me, even though I've taught them the job, some have taught me some of the things I didn't know that, I, the, I, that, I could, that we could do as a business. So you need to take that into consideration. I need to know that I'm speaking to people and I'm not speaking, hi guys, are you there? <laughs> All right. So build your reputation on the principles that you've said. Build your reputation. No one is going to build it for you. Unfortunately, you have to build your reputation. I'm, I'm standing here. I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean to be braggadocious, but... Guys, I'm telling you the truth. From where I'm standing, the, my, my business has grown because of the recommendations I got from people that have worked with me before. They'd say, no, Rufan. No, we work with Brendeck. They deliver. They deliver on time, and you are assured that it's great quality. I'm not bragging, but that's what we do. But it's a good thing. It's a good thing, and I need to say it out. I need to let you know that that's what we do. So you need to make sure that you build your reputation. Build your reputation. You choose how you want to be defined. The other day I was talking to a client of mine who has referred another big client to me. They were saying, um, I, and I was calling, just calling him to ask a few things. They say, hey, I think I might want to work this way and this way with these guys. Do you think, do they have enough money to pay me? And he said, 
Yeah, you can charge them. You can charge them. I know that you do. What, whatever you do is great quality, so you can charge them. They'll pay. That sounds good, guys. <laughs> that sounded so good. Ah, my time. That sounded so good. So from being the girl who used to sell glasses with the sense of identity and the right principles, I now own a business. I run the other one part-time. I studied events management. I do events management consultancy as and when the jobs come. When it comes to that one, I'm very, I'm very selfish because I want to get paid. That's a skill I went to school for, so I really want to get paid for that one. So my last gig, which still hasn't finished, was with uh, UB School of Medicine. I was hired by my former boss as a consultant. There are other people in the office that he could have taken, you know, with the team to go and consult, UB School of Medicine, you know, but he said, I'd like to take my team, but I'd also like to take, to take Khofaone as well, to be part of the team, and we'll pay you this much. The, well, we were supposed to organize their 10th year anniversary. It didn't happen due to COVID last year. But because of the right principles and the identity that I have, I was being, I, I was, you, you get selected. You, 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 we are given opportunities just like that. So I, I think I'm going to wrap it in a bit. So guys, in starting a business as a woman, it's not going to be easy, in conclusion. When I hired my first employee in the business, it was a guy. So most of the time, people walked in and never paid the hell. They would pass me by, literally pass me by, say hi, I say hi, and they'd pass me and go talk to the guy. And then when he gets stuck, he comes to me and says, Rofa, can you come and assist? But that was good. I then came in, and then I showed them, yes, I'm a woman, but I can do this thing. I've been doing this thing. So they, those are some of the challenges that you might face as a woman, especially if you get into a, a male-dominated industry. You, will, you, will, you, you are often made to feel out of place, but that shouldn't discourage you. And then you should also, in the back of your mind, know that as much as you are a woman, you are first a human being, and you have the capability and the ability to do what you know best. And don't let anybody put you down on that. All right? Don't let anybody put you down on that when you start your own business. If it's a male, whether it, you're starting it as a mechanic, you have to get there and know that you have the capability to do this. You have the ability to do it to do this and do it with your level best. It's nothing, it's either, you go big or go home, guys. That's, that's, that's me. It's either I do it to my best ability or I don't do it at all. No compromise. I hope I've shared with you enlightenment that you will use as you go on and start your own businesses. Do it with your all and you will receive the results. Anything that you put out is gonna be received back. I do it, I do it with my all. I don't doubt myself. What I can't do, I refer to somebody who can't. It doesn't take anything away from me. But I'd rather save my reputation than ruin it by trying to do an overnight, uh, I don't know what it is, gimmick so that I can get the money. Don't, I prefer not to to do that because my reputation and the reputation of my business is very important to me. Guys, I don't think I'm going to finish. I think my time has elapsed. But thank you so much for your attention.